Good morning. There it is. Happy New Year to all of you. It is a great day that the Lord has given us. We come to worship the Lord our God. Will you stand with me on this day as we remember our baptism and think about all that God has done for us? So good to see your smiling faces on today. Uh, Bob Judge, our lay leader, will lead us in our call to worship. Bob? We come to examine our relationships and explore our call by God to love. God desires intimacy, passion, and commitment on both sides. We are so loved by God that humanity is able to be reborn through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn will be hymn 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Good to see you, Sean. It is just good to have all of you. Good to see you, choir. All of you here today. What a great day as we come to magnify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I feel good here today. I feel good that God has blessed us. I know that this is a great time for all of us to get started on what God has for us in this new year. Welcome to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. This is a safe, inclusive faith community seeking and growing in Christ's love. And what I realize is that the more and more we see Christ, the more we find out more about who we are, who God is, and then people can see also uh, Christ in us. Please register your attendance. Let us know that you are here. For you that are viewing online, please register as well. You that are here, you can register, of course, with your app. You got the Shelby app that you can let us know that you are present or as you walk in or walk out. I pray during this time that you allow God to just, again, keep us connected. There's a lot going on, a lot of things happening in our lives, so please, if you don't mind, keep us connected. Stay connected at bearcreekumc.org. That's going to be important for us to stay connected if something's going on, or you can text me. Just do that right away, anytime, 832-773-4901. 
uh, with everything going on with the COVID cases going up, we need to continue to check on those individuals that may uh, become infected and, and, and sick. And we just want to continue to pray. Pray for our preschool, our teachers, all our parents as well. Uh, we'll be in school next week, uh, this week coming. And we just want to make sure everybody's safe. All of our uh, kids, as far as uh, school is concerned and parents, it's so important. Uh, pray for my mom. My mom is 90 years old, and she contracted COVID on this past week, and um, she had a high fever and was uh, feel, not feeling so good. And then the next day, thank God, she was feeling great, feeling great, and the next day she's feeling great. So I pray, no fever, no anything. Keep praying for her. Uh, my sisters were saying that uh, if you can get your folks to pray, and that's great. So I, I want you to... Uh, Pray for my mom, if you don't mind. Glory uh, is her name, Glory. My dad would always, you know, he was a preacher, so sometimes, you know, he'll just go, Glory, you know, like that, you know, like he's praising God. <laughs> and, of course, he he say, what? What do you want? <laughs> but he, he was a jokester, though. I just love my mom, and I want her feeling good, and, of course, with you as well. We want to do everything it takes to stay safe ourselves and also to keep our loved ones safe. So keep doing what you're doing. You're smart, and I, I love you for that. Uh, this week of course uh, we start a brand new uh, series today it is let's talk love have y'all ever just thought about talking love with one another y'all ever whisper in each other's ear or something you know just go let's talk love you ever do that well we're going to talk love for eight weeks, I'm asking us to talk love. Love in all our relationships. Our relationship with God, our relationship uh, with our family, our relationship at work and school. I mean, I just want us to think about what it means to love even our enemy. Even our enemy. It's going to be important as we talk love during this time. Also, we got a brand new uh, ministry. Uh, Mario Head is going to be leading. He is leading our BC uh, men, uh, BC Dads, And so there's a new program that we have. It's um, in partnership with the Pelchin, the, the Pelchin Children's Center. And it's exciting for all our dads. We're going to ask that you meet with us on Wednesday night, 630, if you're interested, if you are a dad or a dad role model, because we have a program. It's called 24-7 uh, Father Program, and we just want to do everything we can to um, be better fathers. And so please uh, join us for that. Uh, this Sunday, of course, we have remembering our baptism. Next Sunday, we'll have commissioning. So all of our leaders, we're asking you to be here on next Sunday as we commission all of our leaders, introduce them to you as well. At the end of this service, we'll remember our baptism. We're going to ask everyone to uh, come forward, just like you would come forward uh, for our sacrament of communion, except today we will be remembering our baptism. However you feel comfortable, whether you... Uh, uh, dip your finger in the water, make the sign of the cross, sprinkle it on you, or if you just, you know, if you just bow, just, just acknowledge and remember your baptism. It's going to be so important uh, for us today in getting started in this new year. Amen? Good to be here. Will you stand where you are? Look around. See who you haven't seen in a while. Give them a big smile. You might do an air hug, do a wave. If you're close enough, you can give them a hug however you feel comfortable. That's up to you. But just let somebody know you're happy to see them. Just keep looking around. Make sure it is so good to see you. Some of you we hadn't seen in a while, so we want to say we're so happy that you are here on today. What a blessing it is. Good to see you, Gene and, and Hannah uh, and, and Rachel. Good to see you guys. Been praying for you. All of you, it is just so good to see everybody. Will you remain standing? Bob Judge is going to lead us in our Apostles' Creed. Let's remind ourselves what we believe as a community together. Bob? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's prayer time at Bear Creek. And as every Sunday, when we come together in this place to worship God, to draw nearer 
for we are called to draw near. Let us remember those among us who are in need or suffering. So we have several individuals in our congregation who are recovering from surgery. They're in rehab. So keep in mind Gary and Judy, Pat and Don, uh, as they all are going through rehabs for different procedures that they went through in the last several weeks. Let's also keep in mind all of the individuals around the world who suffered in the last week, um, the fires that we talked about in uh, Colorado, uh, the families of the people that lost their lives in northern Pakistan and the amazing snowstorm of northern Pakistan this week. Around the world, people suffer, and around the world, people don't necessarily get a chance to know the love of God. So let us keep all of them in our minds today as we pray together. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we love you for we know that you love us. In all that we do and all that we are, we know that the love that you pour out upon us is without asking. It is because we are yours. And so we ask you, Lord, today to draw us nearer, to comfort us, to heal us, to be with those who are in pain, who are suffering, who are grieving. Be with those who don't know your love. Open our hearts, open our minds, move our feet and move our hands so that we can reach into the world and into this community and show your love to all of those around us. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now will you join Paola Rodriguez as she as leads us in the Lord's Our prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Uh, give her a hand. I appreciate our, our young children uh, participating. On a Wednesday night, of course, you can come and join them. They are always here uh, on Wednesday night, and we're getting kicked off for the new year this coming Wednesday night. All of our children, our young people, so we invite you uh, to be a part. 6.30 until 8 o'clock. It's going to be good. How are you doing, sweetie? Doing great. All right. I like hearing that. Uh, we had class together on yesterday. It's always good. You know, that's one of those things we talked about, uh, let's talk love. And if you, if you want to do, you know, as far as uh, get closer together, one thing is you can have class together. And that's one thing that's been good for us is having class together. Uh, so I really enjoy you being in the class. Anything was um, important yesterday for you or stood out, you think? You know? oh, that was good. Yeah, it was really good. Yesterday we talked, a, we, we talked about a prayer called the welcoming prayer. It was pretty good. I mean, uh, Lupe actually uh, wasn't feeling her best with her neck. I guess woke up My some spine. and her spine. And we actually prayed the welcoming prayer, went through that prayer. And when it was over with, how did you feel then? It was, I was like 95% better. I mean, it was amazing. Can you imagine that? I mean, so she, she was just like totally gone. I mean, as far as all the, the pain. So... I can't wait to introduce that to you guys. That's, it, it was just a, uh, an amazing, amazing prayer. I want to say a big thank you uh, for all of you that contribute last year. I'll, I'll have a final report uh, for us next Sunday financially, but you know we had asked you uh, for December. We needed $150,000 to finish the year at least breaking even. And all I'm going to tell you this, we'll have a final report on next week, but I want to tell you this at least. You came through. I want to say that. Isn't that amazing for our church? That's all I want to say. Hallelujah. You, you, <laughs> I, I was dancing for two weeks. I'm not kidding you. So I just want you to know I'm so proud of our church and, and what God, and just praise God. Will you give God a praise? Will you just thank God? We're so excited about what this new year holds for us, and 
Again, good to see all of you here. As we prepare for giving today, I want you to think of just how good God is and, and everything that God has blessed us with, everything from our health and strength and, and just all that God has given us and all God has blessed us and the little that we give back in comparison to all the blessing. I want us to, as we give today, whether you're giving online, and some of you do to recurrent, and I appreciate that as well, or whether you write a check or mail it in, whatever it is, I want to say uh, that it's appreciated uh, here at Bear Creek as we continue to do what God has called us to do. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. What an awesome God you are to allow us to be faithful to you, to be generous to you, knowing that we'll never, ever repay you for what you have done for us. And even though we do our best to give and, and, and do our best to serve God, there is nothing, Lord Jesus, that we can do that will satisfy what you have done for us except to give our life. And therefore, Father, as we talk about love during this time, help us to love you like we've never loved you before. We praise you and we thank you. Bless these gifts. Multiply it. Use it for your glory, we pray in your son Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves the cheer forgivers, so as you give today, smile.
remain standing for the reading of our scripture. Scripture today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Dear friends, let's love each other, because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God, because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his God, sent his son as a sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, choir. Love that song. That was one of my, Davis, my dad's favorite songs, and I appreciate that. Love lifted me. Thank God for Janet. Appreciate you. Ron, Reverend Ron, you guys, come out here, Reverend Ron. I got to say a big thank you. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be able to take off uh, two Sundays like that if it wasn't for you. You know that. Did this guy, is this guy all right or what? I appreciate Ron so very much, and I thank God for his service, and I appreciate you. Uh, he, he won't call me or, or anything. Like, he, he wants me to rest and stuff, and, of course, I want to know everything, and he still won't call me, you know, and I want to know everything. I appreciate it, though. I want you to know that. Thank you so very much. I love you very much, man. Thank God for your wife, too. You know, he wouldn't be who he is without Susan. God bless you. Give her a hand. I love her. Makes all the difference. Appreciate uh, Susie preaching as well. It's, it's good, just good. Love Bear Creek. At the beginning of each year, after an end-of-the-year assessment of my life during the year, I always make an adjustment. Well, if one is necessary, and usually there is. My motto has been, New Year, New Attitude. I always say that. New year, new attitude. Because somewhere down the year seemed like you just lose it somewhere there. With a focus on love and relationships this year, what is going to be your attitude? What is going to be your attitude? We know love is addictive. Research has shown everyone wants love, and when we receive it, we can't get enough. Can't get enough love. The hormones in our brain releases, that our brain releases, and, and when we experience the love that we give, uh, such as positive feelings we feel and experience warm hearts, I mean, who doesn't want that, right? It leaves us wanting more. How has love developed and matured in your life, especially in your relationships? with your family, with your friends, with your acquaintances, even with your coworkers or those romantic relationships that you have. This series is called Let's Talk Love. Let's Talk Love. And it encourages us to examine our relationships and explore our call by God to love. To love while getting a better understanding of how that love flows from God back to others. It flows from God to us and then from us back to God and others. Let's Talk Love is eight sermons, including this introduction, that encourages us to talk about love in our relationships. John started in the text by saying, Dear friends, dear friends, let's love each other. Translators use the words love, friends there, friends as well as beloved, to describe the target audience for this message. It means those who are loved. This message is for those who are loved because God is saying that those who are loved, let us love. Let us love. And it makes it clear that if you don't know love, then it's impossible for you to love. There are eight different kinds of love. 
going with the, the, the Greek understanding of, of love. There's the unconditional love, and then there's the romantic love. There is affectionate love, and then there's self-love. There is the familiar love, family love, and then there's the enduring love. There is the playful love, and last, there is the obsessive love. John, in this passage of Scripture, is referring to the unconditional love, the agape love. It is that concept of self-giving love that gives without demanding and without expecting repayment. It is the God kind of love. And then there is what we call the languages of love. How do you receive this love? As described by Gary Chapman in his book, The Five Languages of Love. These are ways in which we receive and give love. I want you to play, pay close attention to these. This is important for you. The way you choose to give love may not be the way that the person receiving it wants it. That's important. The five languages of love, first there is words of affirmation. We just love people telling us positive things, right? Good things. Secondly, it's quality time. Quality time. We just want someone to spend time with us. Third is the receiving of gifts. Give me something to show that you love me. Four acts of service. As long as you're doing something for me, that is your way of showing me love. And then five is physical touch. Mine's is physical touch. And I remember growing up wanting my dad so much just to hold me, just hug me. But my dad was not that kind of man. My dad would tell me because I'd say, Daddy, you don't hug me, you don't love me. He'd say, and, he, and I always, you know, my dad talks through his nose, you know. He would go, boy, and that's what he'd say, boy. He'd say, I work all day long. If that's not telling you I love you, I don't know what else I can do. His way of loving was acts of service. I needed him to do more than that. He wasn't going to do it. <laughs> Imagine touching someone. Imagine touching someone in an act of love. But the other person's love language is not physical touch. Because their love language is actually words of affirmation so when you touch them thinking you're loving them it does nothing for them nothing every human relationship is like a triangle two people in the relationship is at the base of the triangle and God is at the top the closer we draw to God the closer we get to one another. Psychologist Robert Sternberg, his triangular theory of love, explains the topic of the love of relationship based on three components, intimacy, passion, and commitment. Intimacy, I want to start with intimacy. Intimacy is being it, it means that feeling, that feeling of closeness that we have. It doesn't necessarily have to involve love. You can be intimate with your friends and, and with your family. But if you love someone, and this is important, if you love someone, you need to have a strong connection with them. And that is what we mean by intimacy. It's about vulnerability. Vulnerability. Because the degree of intimacy in your relationship is measured by the person with the lower, the lower level of vulnerability. So you can have high vulnerability and they can have low and you have to go down and say, this is what we are. 
the lower vulnerability. And then you look at passion. Is there passion in your relationships? This is that fire burning within you, the strong emotions that you have for someone you love. Passion, therefore, is measured by how much you think about the person and you feel every time and what you feel every time you think about the person and what you have when you're with that person. These feelings are sometimes unexplainable. I love Psalm 139 because it actually tells me God's passion for myself and for you. Get this. This is what it says. The Living Bible in Psalm 139 verse 17 says, How precious is it, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. Constantly. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn toward me. And when I awaken or awaken in the morning, you're still thinking of me. And then there's commitment. Commitment is when you stay with someone. When you stay with someone and you make plans for the future. John 3.16 says that God so loved us. God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and get this and never really die I want you to understand that never really die can you understand God's compassion God's commitment and God's desire for intimacy how close if you never die how close can you get to someone if you never die God made a made a decision God made a decision or your parents made a decision at your baptism at your baptism you made a decision or your parents made a decision and later you affirmed that decision to love God and to always be with God God made a promise to love you and always be with you today we get to reaffirm our baptism we get to remember that decision and that commitment in your relationship with God God desires intimacy I know that's a fr frightening thing sometimes because we fear it God wants intimacy God wants passion and God wants commitment it should not be a one-way relationship. It shouldn't be just what God is giving all the intimacy, the passion, and the commitment. No, God will love us unconditionally, always. So the question is, how are we, how are you developing the intimacy, the passion, and the commitment? I remember my son, Buddy, whenever he was conceived. He wasn't even born yet, and I was like praying and asking God, how can I love my boy? <laughs> I was so nervous. Did not know how to love a child because I've never had one. And I asked God, how? How will I be able to love this boy? And God answered me, love him like I love my son. Love him like I love my son. I remember reading in the gospel, and Jesus said, my father and I, we are one. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I wanted this bond with my boy. When Jesus was baptized, his father looked down on him. And in, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, he says, Hey guys, this is my beloved son. This is my son, my beloved, the one I love, with whom I'm well pleased. 
It was my goal to love my son in this same way. I actually named him Leo Marshall Tyler II. I figure, you know, I love me. I should be able to love me again. No, I love that. But I call him my buddy. I called him my buddy from the beginning because I just wanted us to be buddy. And he, I thank God today, is still my buddy. Everything begins with God's love, according to Scripture. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Listen to it again. The person who doesn't love does not know God. The person who does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. I did not do well in my marriage to Buddy's mom. But I thank God that Lupe is allowing me to love her, and I'm, I'm doing much better. John Gottman and the authors of Eight Dates, Essential Conversations for a Lifetime of Love, they say this. The words, the words that pass between you and your partner or your friend determine your relationship. The words. Words are so important. They're so powerful, impactful. These authors suggest eight conversation-based dates that, quote, will result in a lifetime of understanding and commitment whether the couple is newly in love or has been together for decades. Start by making the time and then commit to listening to each other. Find the right words for how you're feeling and ask the questions. Ask the questions of your partner. How are you? And then when you listen, say something. Tell me what you're most concerned about. Let them know you care. Expect to express tolerance and empathy, which is simply saying, I understand how you feel. Everybody wants to be understood. During these next eight weeks, let's talk love. Let's talk love. As, as uncomfortable as it may be sometimes, let's talk love. John says, this is love. It is not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be a sacrifice that deals with our sins. Listen, sin needed to be dealt with because it separated us from God. It is the barrier also in our relationships. You're going to find that that's the barrier in our relationships. And God so loved us, loved us so much that sin had to be done away with. And so what does he do? He sends his son. You are God's beloved. We are God's beloved. God loves us so much. He was willing to do whatever it took for us to be reunited. Do you feel like today humanity in Christ is the solution? We are in Christ, and it costs God. It costs God becoming human. It costs God becoming human and suffering death through his son, Jesus Christ. But through the resurrection... And the ascension, the triumph over sin and death, humanity is reborn in Christ and will never be separated from God again. Are you, have you affirmed what Christ has done for you? That's remembering your baptism today. As I close today, let me read what John said. It sounds so much like a prayer to me. But he says, dear friends, if God loved us this way, 
we ought also to love each other. No one has ever seen God. He put that in there. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God remains in us and his love made perfect in us. What I realize at this point, you see, is not only are we made in the image of God, but we are becoming the image of God as we love. It's the love. This is how people will know God because of the love. Are you ready? Let's talk love. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so very much. You are a loving God. And we thank you so very much for who you are. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to remove the barrier between us and you. Nothing stops us now from uniting with you, from having a close relationship with you, desiring you, being intimate with you, committing to being with you, committing ourselves to you. And so we ask today, give us the strength, Lord, as we move closer to you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, today's a good day. A good day to invite Jesus Christ into your life. That's a decision. That comes under commitment. You make a decision, and then you're able to commit. But it starts with that decision. You have to decide to love. You have to decide to love. Will you pray this prayer with me? Say, Father. Come on, pray with me. Say, Father, thank you. For your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for loving me so that I can love others. I make a decision today to recommit myself to you. Come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite you to remember your baptism. That's Reverend Ron to join me. Ron, bring the uh, program down. I want to read that at the bottom. And I'm going to ask if you would stand with me, everyone, please, as we remember our baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to let you read it. Go ahead, read that. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. We renew the covenant declared in our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And now let us all respond together. We give, give thanks, thanks for all, all that God, God has already given, given us. And remember the waters of our baptism. Of our baptism. As, As members of the body of Christ and Bear Creek United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we ask that you pour out your spirit upon everyone today who will be remembering their baptism. And upon this water, Lord Jesus, as we remember our baptism, that we have been washed by you, that we have been cleansed by you, and that we are born again in you. We praise you and we thank you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Today I want you to come and remember your baptism as we 
sing together? Oh, we're going to do it after. We'll do it after. You good? Okay. I'm going to ask if you would come and remember your baptism. Will you come and you can come? The ushers will lead. Come on, ushers. If you don't mind, just come. The ushers will lead. And if you want to put your hand in, remember your baptism, maybe sign of the cross, or if you just want uh, to acknowledge, please come. Just going to ask you, please come. Everyone from the back, please come. You can remember your baptism.
Remember your baptism and be blessed. Amen. Will you please stand as we sing together our hymn of invitation. Hello, everyone. Our hymn of invitation will be hymn 138, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6. The King of Love My Shepherd You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate that. God has been so good. I hope you feel the presence of God right now. Think about love and think about how much God loves you as we enjoy this postlude by Don.
That's so beautiful. Music for your heart and as you leave here today. I'm going to ask that you spend some time, if you, if you don't mind standing, I want you to spend some time with God and with someone that you love. Just spend some time with God and someone you love and just ask the question, what is it that concerns you the most? And then just listen. Just listen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. I'm just going to wave at you today. I'm going to wait till these numbers come down and do some more hugging. I'll catch up with you, I promise you. I'll make up. Let us now depart in thy peace, blessed Jesus.